what is the locus of all directions inclined at a given angle theta to a given direction OP. So OP is the direction here drawn from the origin O. In the plane of the screen, we can easily find a direction at an angle theta to P. But within the same plane, there is another direction on the other side of OP, which is also making an angle theta. These two directions are the only directions which are inclined at an theta within this plane. But if we leave the confines of this plane and think three-dimensionally, then we get a cone. A cone with an axis OP and semi-apex angle theta. Any direction lying on the surface of this cone is always at an angle theta to OP. So the solution to this problem is the surface of this cone. Now let us project these, this cone of directions stereographically. To do this, we introduce the projection plane and the reference sphere centered at the origin O. This sphere cuts the projection plane in a circle known as primitive circle and we also introduce an axis perpendicular to the projection plane which cuts the sphere at N and S, the north and the south pole. The cone of direction whose apex is at the center of the sphere cuts the sphere in a circle. This circle is the spherical projection of the cone of directions. Note spherical projection not the stereographic projection. To get the stereographic projection we project this circle using the projection point S onto the projection plane. Now because of the important result of stereographic projection, the most elegant property of stereographic projection that every circle on the sphere, every circle on the sphere projects as a circle on the projection plane, we get the projection as a circle. This circle then represents this cone of angle theta about OP and this circle is called a small circle. So a small circle is nothing but projection of a cone of directions. Why a small circle? To contrast it with great circle which is projection of a plane. If we think still in terms of cone but make the semi apex angle of the cone theta equal to 90 degree. Then the cone degenerates into a plane passing through the center of the sphere. Any plane cuts the sphere in a circle, plane passing through the center of the sphere cuts it into the largest possible circle. So that's why these circles are known as great circle. And the projection of such a circle in the projection plane shown in the red curve here is also a circle and is known as great circle. So great circle is nothing but projection of a plane and a small circle is nothing but projection of a cone. Let us consider the special case of a cone with the north-south axis as its axis. Such a cone will cut the sphere into this green circle which is horizontal or parallel to the projection plane. So when we join this green circle with S to project it stereographically, we get a green cone which is a right circular cone. So the stereographic projection of the green circle is nothing but section of this green cone by this projection plane and that is a small red circle shown there. And this circle is concentric with the primitive. So small circle is concentric with the primitive in the case of a cone whose axis is the vertical axis.
Now, what is the radius of this small circle? So we get a small circle about the center of the primitive and we want to find out its radius. Any pole on this circle is at an angle theta to the center because all directions which it is representing are at angle theta to the vertical axis. Remember, the center of the primitive represents the vertical axis. So any pole on this circle is at an angle theta. So the distance of that pole, little r, is given by capital R tan theta by 2, where capital R is the radius of the primitive. So this is also the radius of the small circle. Let us consider a little bit more general case in which OP is a direction inclined to the vertical and so projects as a pole, a general pole within the primitive here. Let us say the distance of this pole from the center NP is D. Then the distance angle relation gives us D is equal to R tan phi by 2 or inverting this relation we get the angle phi as 2 tan inverse d by r. So if any pole is given to us in a primitive circle, we can always find its angle from the center using phi is equal to 2 tan inverse d by r. Now we wish to construct a small circle around p. To do this, we first join the diameter of the circle through p. This diameter represents a vertical plane passing through the direction OP in three dimensions. Now, on this diameter, we wish to locate two poles, X and Y, on either side of P and at an angle theta with P. How do we locate these poles X and Y? For this, we have to know their distance from n. To get this distance, we note that both x and y are at theta from p, so x is at phi minus theta from n. p is at phi from n and x is theta back towards n from p. So the angular separation between n and x is phi minus theta. Similarly, y is at phi plus theta from n. So using the distance angle formula, nx becomes r tan phi minus theta by 2 and ny becomes r tan phi plus theta by 2. Once we know these distances, we can locate x and y on the stereogram. The desired small circle then is a circle passing through x and y and having x, y as its diameter. So we draw a circle with x, y as a diameter. We can always find the center of this circle by taking the midpoint of x and y. So for any given general pole and any given angle theta, we can always draw a small circle around it. Let us consider as a final case of a pole lying on the primitive. The procedure to draw a small circle around this pole is exactly the same as outlined previously. We draw a diameter through P and we fix two poles X and Y. We locate two poles X and Y on either side of P at angular distances theta. Then the desired small circle is the circle passing through x and y and having x, y as the diameter. Conventionally, we do not show the part of the circle lying outside the primitive, so we can rub that off to have our projection in the standard form like this. Thank you.